An in-depth investigation into Donald Trump's finances from the New York Times dropping in just the last hour implicates President Trump in suspected tax evasion and instances of outright fraud that, quote, greatly increased the fortune he received from his parents, a potentially devastating revelation for a president who has based his entire identity in the public and private sectors on the contention that he is a self-made billionaire. The stunning report is the result of an exhaustive investigation by The New York Times based on what it describes as a vast trove of confidential tax returns and financial records. It's the first comprehensive look at the president's entire financial history. The report reveals that Trump received the equivalent today of at least $413 million from his father's real estate empire, starting when he was a toddler and continuing to this day, adding that much of this money came to Mr. Trump because he helped his parents dodge taxes. He and his siblings set up a sham corporation to disguise millions of dollars in gifts from their parents, records and interviews show. Records indicate that Mr. Trump helped his father take improper tax deductions worth millions more. An attorney for President Trump forcefully denies the litany of allegations laid out by the Times, saying, quote, the New York Times allegations of fraud and tax evasion are 100 percent false and highly defamatory. There was no fraud or tax evasion by anyone. The facts upon which the Times bases its false allegations are extremely inaccurate. Should the Times state or imply that President Trump participated in fraud, tax evasion or any other crime, it will be exposing itself to substantial liability and damages for defamation. Here to help us sift through this massive story, Jennifer Rubin, Washington Post opinion writer, happens to be a former tax attorney, Matt Miller, former chief spokesman for the Justice Department, Ashley Parker, White House reporter for the Washington Post, Sam Stein, politics editor for the Daily Beast, and Heidi Presbell is here. Um, Ashley, let me start with you on just the sheer political enormity of, of the entire Trump brand of a self-made billionaire falling apart based on this investigation. Well, it, it certainly does undercut his inception story and his narrative, which is sort of the crux of being Donald Trump, right? And it's some, the irony is that story really comes from, for a lot of voters, what they learned about the president on The Apprentice, which is actually sort of, re, well, it is reality television and it's quite fictitious. So now you have actual reality bumping up with the fiction of reality TV. Um, and so that is huge and cannot be overstated. At the same time, and again, we'll, we'll have to wait and see this literally just broke. One thing that has always struck me, especially about the president's core group of supporters, is that the rules of normal political gravity do not apply. And the president has often been able to say to things like making products overseas that would otherwise be unacceptable, well, wouldn't you have done the same thing? Wouldn't you too have avoided taxes if you could. That's just smart business. We don't know what his response will be. Um, but on the one hand, you're right, it totally undercuts the myth of President Trump, the deal maker, the businessman. And on the other hand, it'll be interesting to see if the president can find a way to talk his way out of this. And let's see, it's not just his identity based on his time in reality television. It was one of his central messages on the campaign trail. Here's Donald Trump talking about being self-made. I mean, my whole life really has been a no, and I fought through it. I have been, and you know, I talk about it. it it's not been easy for me. It has not been easy for me. And, you know, I, I started off in Brooklyn. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. My father uh, gave me a very small loan in 1975, and I built it into a company that's worth many, many billions of dollars with some of the greatest assets in the world. And I say that only because that's the kind of thinking that our country needs. I may have to watch that a few times to get through this hour, but let me contrast his uh, public statements, which often struggle uh, with the truth, with the, the, the first couple paragraphs of this New Times investigation. The president has long sold himself as a self-made billionaire, but a Times investigation found that he received at least $413 million in today's dollars from his father's real estate empire, much of it through tax dodges. President Trump participated in dubious tax schemes during the 90s, including instances of outright fraud that greatly increased the fortune he received from his parents. Um, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. What's I that? think you can say you're going to, you know, have a certain position. You can say you're going to build a wall and never build a little wall. You can say you're going to, um, you know, do this or that. But I don't think you can say you're self-made and actually be someone who inherited $443 million. You want to bet? Yeah. I bet Trump I will know. do it. Um, no, it's, I mean, for a lot of people who've watched this sober-mindedly, this is nothing new. We knew that 
you know, he was an inheritor of immense wealth that his father helped bail him out on numerous occasions. Well, he was that eight he went through when he bankruptcy. became a millionaire. According to this story, he, by age three, he was earning $200,000 a year. <laughs> and today's money, a millionaire by age eight, maybe he, you know, I don't know, maybe Hard he was knocks. really good at like building those train sets. Um, but, you know, well, to Ashley's point, voters seem to not really care. For me, you know, what's remarkable about this uh, and I'm looking at it in a meta sense, is, you know, one of the things that is remarkable is that why did it take so long for a st something like this to come out about his background? I mean, mm -hmm, this, is, mm -hmm. this is instructional, this is about who he is, it's foundational to his story, and yet we're just now getting this stuff. And the reason is, is because Donald Trump, unlike any other person who's ever run for president before, comes from a different type of universe. So mm -hmm. people who are always looking into his past, the opposition researchers on, uh, on different campaigns, had a lot of trouble digging into yeah. stuff because the, re the paper trail is so Byzantine and complex, mm -hmm. as opposed to a politician who has votes or right. took donations. Let me read, the Times sure. addresses just your point. Let me, let me read that and then we'll pick this up. So they, they, they report uh, near the top of the story, a handful of journalists and biographers, notably Wayne Barrett, Gwenda Blair, David K. Johnson, and Tim O'Brien, have challenged Trump's story, especially the claim of being worth $10 billion. They described how Mr. Trump piggybacked off his father's banking connections to gain a foothold in Manhattan real estate. They poked holes in his go-to talking point about the $1 million loan, citing evidence that he actually got $14 million. They told how Fred Trump once helped his son make a bond payment at an Atlantic casino, Atlantic City casino by buying $3.5 million in casino chips. But the Times investigation of the Trump family finances is unprecedented in scope and precision, offering the first comprehensive look at the inherited fortune and tax dodges that guarantee Donald J. Trump a gilded life. The reporting makes clear that in every era of Mr. Trump's life, his finances were deeply intertwined with and dependent on his father's wealth. Yeah, and there's some data, there's some anecdotes in here that just boggle the mind. Um, for instance, setting up this, essentially what is a shell, a shell company ostensibly designed to do all the purchases for the properties that they were built, that they had in Fred Trump's empire, but really making no purchases at all, claiming the purchases were made, and just transferring the money to Donald Trump and his siblings. I mean, that is just gross evasion of taxation. There's another anecdote about Donald Trump trying to essentially take his father's will, manipulate it so that he would become the sole inheritor, and his own sister, at his father's instructions, looking at it and saying, you know what, this doesn't pass the smell test. Now, those are biographical character assessments that could maybe resonate with voters, but I think they might get lost in the business. Just All right, hang on, let me see. On the phone now, we have one of the reporters who broke this story, David Barstow, a Pulitzer Prize-winning senior writer at the New York Times. Um, we are diving through this in real time, but, but take us through not just the revelations in your reporting, but, but, but the, the breadth and the depth and, and the time invested in this investigation. Um, yeah, we spent um, an enormous amount of time, I think, as you can see from um, from just the sheer length of the story, um, trying to um, piece together um, using, you know, over 100,000 pieces of paper that we swept up over many, many months of reporting um, and, and uh, trying to um, really peel back a whole bunch of more layers of the onion um, in terms of looking at the financial biography of uh, the 45th president. Um, I think the most, you know, I think some of the, the notable things that help um, give our reporting both its precision and its detail is that we were able to um, ultimately um, sweep up tens of thousands of pages of previously confidential financial records that really detail the inner workings of the very impressive real estate empire that the president's father constructed over many years in Brooklyn and Queens, including uh, more than 200 tax returns um, that are not the president's tax returns, but these are tax returns that actually for the first time give us a sense of the money that flowed from Fred Trump's real estate empire to the president through various family partnerships and trusts. David, it's it's extraordinary um, as you're as you're talking about it in its um, 
in its detail, but I wonder if we can start at the beginning of Donald Trump's life, because you report that by age three, Mr. Trump was earning $200,000 a year in today's dollars from his father's empire. He was a millionaire by age eight. By the time he was 17, his father had given him part ownership of a 52-unit apartment building. Soon after Mr. Trump graduated from college, he was receiving the equivalent of a million dollars a year from his father. The money increased with the years to more than $5 million in his 40s and 50s. So the lie, did, did you uncover when, when the lie about being self-made and only receiving one million dollars total from his father where that came from and, and and it seems like that that was that was rendered false by the time he was eight um yeah um i mean i think i think one of the most important things that we've uncovered here is just the incredibly um creative ways that fred trepp came up with to, to funnel money um, to to all of his children, but, but actually to Donald Trump in particular. We actually have been able to document 295 different streams of revenue that Fred uh -huh. Trump created to enrich Donald Trump over a 50-year period of time. I mean, it was um, kind of astonishing the different ways that Fred Trump funneled money to Donald. He didn't just put him on his payroll. He made him his banker. He made him his landlord. He made him his consultant. He made him his property manager. He made him his purchasing agent. He gave him laundry revenue. It just was sort of on and on and on and on the uh, various methods um, and strategies that Fred Trump used to, to funnel uh, money to, 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 to President Trump. Um, and not just at the beginning of the president's career, but actually throughout his adulthood. Um, uh, you know, we could see and trace through the documents that we obtained that when the president was in trouble, um, Fred Trump was there and, uh, you know, uh, supporting him um, with additional monies. When Donald Trump was taking on big new projects, Fred Trump was sort of the silent partner behind the scenes, helping him out with with loans and et cetera. I mean, we've 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 traced four hundred and thirteen million dollars in direct financial support that Fred Trump gave to his son um, over you know over over multiple decades. Um, this, of course, is also the president who. I think we all got very familiar with on the campaign trail saying he started with a million dollar loan from his father and parlayed that into this ten billion dollar empire. A complete fiction. I want. I want. I found the section of, of the piece that you were just talking about, and I, and I want to read this to you and talk about it um, some more. All told, the Times documented 295 streams of revenue that Fred Trump created over five decades to enrich his son. In most cases, his four other children benefited equally. But over time, as Donald Trump careened from one financial disaster to the next, his father found ways to give him substantially more money. Records show. Even so, in 1990, according to previously secret depositions. Mr. Trump tried to have his father's will rewritten in a way that Fred Trump, alarmed and angered, feared could result in his empires being used to bail out his son's failing businesses. So another myth destroyed. His father was there to bail him out from his failures, it would seem. Yeah, and I think the other I think the other extremely important piece of the story is that um, is that uh, the amount of money that flowed from Fred Trump to to, to Donald was significantly increased um, by uh, um, by a number of uh, certainly legally dubious and certainly in some cases just um, outright fraudulent tax schemes that um, the president participated in. Um, that was a kind of another piece of this was um, understanding that the inheritance that Donald Trump received from his father, both in gifts, gifts and ultimately um, after Fred Trump passed away, that, that inheritance was significantly increased by a variety of um, tax schemes that the various tax experts we consulted with described to us as improper in some cases. Uh, probably illegal. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.